um, this is one week that Scout's been here, and um, today I just have the prong collar on him because we're, um, it's Saturday, we're just going for a more normal walk around um, the yard and the street. I want to talk about housebreaking. When I adopted Coco, she was completely housebroken, and um, so it never came up really. But a lot of the dogs that I saw available were either, um, they had been given up because their owner had had a health issue, or um, in his case, he's a puppy. And I think sometimes when people foster dogs down south, they use um, outdoor kennels. And he, he didn't seem to have any idea at all that he shouldn't be going to the bathroom in the house. So he's been a prime candidate. And I think he's housebroken. So I think a lot of that was luck. Um, but I want to tell you what we did. So whenever he would do anything in the house, I have Gerber uh, diapers that I use for rags. What I was doing, come, home, home, um, I would take a rag, mop it up, and then I got a real mop. Um, originally I had had pine saw, which is what I wash the floors with, but then I switched to vinegar, and he didn't like the vinegar smell or um, he was trying to chase the mop. He didn't like the, the taste of the cider vinegar. But it still didn't um, completely house train him. So um, a relative was here yesterday and there are a few basic uh, ways to house train a dog. Um, we have a crate, so every time he comes out of the crate, I would take him outside. I would uh, walk him at the least three times a day. Setting up a schedule for him, trying to make him realize that he had opportunities to go outside. So yesterday, um, we were outside walking around for about two hours, and he hadn't done anything. Now, with a puppy, or with a puppy that doesn't know their surroundings, um, who knows? It could be that um, he's just taking in so much information. Right now, he's looking uh, down the street at a man he, he met yesterday. The man's going to work. And um, you can tell he's a scent hound. Um, just for a moment, last night somebody came by to pick up a crate. They had lent me a crate because I thought I was getting like a, a beagle puppy um, and it was too small for him. So he had to go in the big crate that I have. But after they left, I brought him out and he tracked from where she was standing to her car back and forth, back and forth. He knew exactly somebody new had been here. And this morning when we came by this man's truck, he stopped and like acknowledged that he had met the man yesterday. So they're so much smarter than we think and they keep records of things. So in the two hours we were walking around yesterday, he should have been uh, going to the bathroom because of all the dogs in the neighborhood, all the different scent markings. He should have been putting down his own scent marking. So we couldn't figure out what the issue was except that if he's been in a shelter or an outdoor kennel, you know, maybe he doesn't understand what grass is. So, at the last minute, um, when my relative was leaving, she said, if you, now that we've been outside and he hasn't done anything, put him in the crate for 20 minutes, and then when you take him out of the crate, take him right outside. And do you know it worked? He, because of the two hours walking around, being um, overstimulated by everything out here, then he had the safety of his crate for 20 minutes. Then we brought him, I, I brought him right out, and he peed. 
Now, the other thing that had come up with this was um, he started to not like the fact that I had rags on the floor and that we then had to get the mop out and clean. He knew what was right and what was wrong. He just hadn't made the connection that he could go outside. So we almost forced him to hold it for that 20 minutes in the crate and then he wanted to go outside. So then he got a big reward, um, something I'm calling a Kong bomb. I put a chew stick in the top of the Kong and um, that's like his big special whoop-de-doo reward. And once he got that, about, well, he went two more times by going when we went out. He went out twice and peed. And then he barked at me that he wanted to go out and did the rest of the business. So I can almost say now um, that he's house trained. So this morning I didn't get him up as early as I've been getting him up because we have a lot of coyotes in the area. And in fact, we got a robocall this year about the number of coyote sightings. He's about the size of a small coyote. And I really don't want to have a coyote dog fight going on. And they are very sneaky and they can just come out of nowhere. Um, so I needed to change his schedule to be getting up when it's light out. Then we can get right up out of the crate and outside. Everything this morning has been going perfectly. So I believe after that little trick we played on him yesterday, um, that we now have him knowing that if he wants to go to the bathroom, he has to go out. And I'm going to try not to focus on it. I've been taking his um, poop, and instead of throwing it away, which our landlord requires, I've been making a pile of it here, or different piles of it, no grass, and letting him have a spot. With Coco, it used to be in the back, uh, for some reason, maybe because winter's coming, um, and I can see better out here with all the lights in case we're out in the middle of the night. In the back, it's a little bit darker, and the coyotes can come from two directions. Out here, I have a little bit more control over that. Um, so I've given him a spot, and he knows where it is. And yesterday, he barked to go out. So uh, vinegar on the floors... Um, I think if you saw my video to uh, Governor Baker, you saw that I was taking the, the diapers that I was wiping it up with and putting them outside. Now, I learned that from uh, someone who had um, a Pomeranian, and they lived on the 28th floor in an apartment building. And I have to get that from him. No sticks. So at this point, he's ready to go back in because he had a he got a new toy today. Just a minute. Give it to me. Give it. It's always important to stop what you're doing and get it out of their mouth. Um, you don't know what it is. Uh, especially if it's outside, mushrooms, um, hostas are toxic. You don't want anything in their mouth unless you um, give it to them. So anyway, my friend, uh, 28 floors up, had um, used pee pads for the dog all along. Then when they um, bought a house, they had taken the pee pads and little by little moved them outside. And the dog made the connection that way. So we used a combination of timing, scheduling, um, a little bit of coercion. Um, he, he had two hours outside to go to the bathroom. By putting him in the crate for 20 minutes, we were um, being a little insistent with him. Didn't hurt him at all. And I was right there watching him. Um, their sense of not peeing in their own bed is what really helped with that. And then um, I think 
we've licked it. And um, now, from this point on, I just reinforce that. And we shouldn't have any accidents. So if you're thinking of adopting a dog, from the South especially, or from any rescue organization, don't let the house training or not house trained part sway you. This is a beautiful, intelligent dog. He also learned sit, and that was because I was, every time, he wouldn't do it, and every time he sat, I said sit. And I didn't give him a treat or anything, and then all of a sudden yesterday, he did it three times in a row. Now we have a dog coming by. Hi. Who's that? And this is perfect. This is perfect. He's ignoring the dog but watching him. Um, little poodle. Adorable little poodle. And one of the next steps will be in introducing him to neighborhood dogs. This is perfect because what he's doing is saying, I have to figure this out. This is a really smart dog. And if you have an opportunity to get a dog um, that looks this smart or intelligent or happy or balanced um, so far, don't let housebreaking deter you.